it's been a long time since I've done another video. There's several reasons for that. First of all, just so much work day in, day out. And uh, I have not neglected the channel, but I came to understanding that uh, making videos when you are when you're swamped at the lab it's pretty difficult <laughs> to say the least um, I mean it just was not technically technically possible for me to uh, uh, film and even if it was it's uh, I there's just no time in the day during that busy period that we had uh, last month or so um, that I could have sliced any types of content together uh, filming is one thing but for me the most time consuming is obviously editing because uh, I've learned all this stuff myself as I go and I really do want to make these videos as unboring as humanly possible uh, so there's a little bit of creativity involved so that being said uh, I'm started thinking like what kind of content uh, does this channel need what kind of content uh, can I show the stuff that I haven't done uh, before not to be repetitive and uh, I did check out quite a bit of replies and you guys a lot of you are asking for um, videos on solid state recovery and I got a couple of those very interesting cases uh, coming because uh, I've done a few and they had been recorded the problem is for me to record everything in one session is a problem uh, it's a completely different topic, I'm not going to get into it today, but I promise you SSD recoveries are coming and you'll see them soon on this channel. Today, it's not an SSD recovery, today, well somewhere similar to an SSD, uh, it's a Lexar Compact Flash, uh, and I've done a few videos on them already, uh, but most of those videos are, not most of them, actually all of them are for chip-off recovery, and the chip-off recovery procedure uh, is the procedure when the memory chip gets removed and the controller function of that uh, device whether it's a SD card flash drive compact flash or any other type that is powered on by ran by a controller uh, is substituted with the equipment now today I'm gonna go over a more economic option to get your data recovered if there is a possibility for it and First of all, let's go over what that possibility is. When you go to the store and when you buy a flash drive or a memory card, uh, my highest suggestion is to buy two of the same cards or two of the same flash drives, same capacity, same place. The reason for that is that they're both built most likely on the same layout, both using same types of components and therefore it makes them interchangeable to a certain degree to reverse some sort of failures. As an alternative, uh, I offered this customer uh, to uh, provide a donor device that could be used for uh, NAND chip transplant and it doesn't happen all the time uh, with every single customer because obviously like let's face it not everybody buys two cards uh, that are identical um, in the same place at the same time but uh, this customer says that they both are purchased at the same place, at the same time. We have a bad card, we have a good card, and I've tested them. Okay, so this one reads in the CF card reader. This one does not. It just hangs. It doesn't get recognized. The reader doesn't get, it doesn't pick it up at all. So, uh, the procedure today, uh, without having, with, without going into too much details, will consist of me removing memory from the bad device, removing memory from the good device, preparing the good device pla uh, PCB itself to uh, accommodate the chips from the bad device. Now I'm gonna go ahead and assume, well let's, let's not assume, let's open them up and see for sure. So the first thing in order to get this done before we remove anything we gotta make sure that they are both in fact identical because if they're not identical even by a tiny bit they're not compatible simple as that and the chip off recovery in that situation would be the only possible way to get the access to the data so I'm gonna uh, use this knife here and just turn on the camera here we go so this is our device as you can see it's a 120 megabyte per second 800x Lexar Professional 32 gig 
Compact Flash UDMA7. How do we compare them um, to ensure compatibility? Well, first they have to be opened up. For uh, whatever reason, every time I do this without camera rolling, it's a much easier process than it is when the camera is turned on. So cutting in like that, not going too deep in because we don't want to damage any components. Prying it up like this. Interesting. And I'll get back to that in a little bit. I'll explain what's so interesting about that part. And do the same for for the controller side as well. So here we have four BGA-152 memory components, possibly BGA, I know, those are BGA-132. And the controller that we're working with today is made by Silicon Motion, and it's a pretty standard con controller for uh, Compact Flash on Lexar. It's a Silicon Motion SM2236 GAC controller. It's a really common controller. So before we start, I want to do a couple of things. I want to mark chips in the order that they will have to be taken off. In case if this does have to go into chip off, this is one, this is two, this is three, <laughs> and this is four. And uh, to mark the controller that it's a failed card, I'm just gonna write letter B here for bad. This is the device that we need data off of. Next, we take this unit that is functional and we're gonna do the same thing to it. We're gonna cut it open So once we open this up, it will pretty much be determining factor whether or not they're gonna work for each other or they won't. So this so far is looking good because the controller as you can see is the same, uh, same package for the memory, same etchings on chips, which is a really, really good start. The design, the layout itself of the card looks identical. They're the same. One last thing that we need to do is undo the backside and just confirm that there are memory components on there because we could have just the uh, same design, same board, only two uh, NANDs on there. Highly unlikely due to the etchings that they would be different, but who knows, maybe there are only two banks. Maybe there are two banks inside of each one of these and no, it all looks the same. So, and we got a donor here that is identical, which is perfect. Um, actually, I think this is gonna be a really cool turnout. First, we're gonna prep the donor board. We're gonna make sure that the donor board is ready to go and ready to rock. So, uh, same way, I don't wanna just kill off the uh, possibility of having this device ever function again. So let's uh, mark them in the same way that uh, we marked um, the uh, failed component. So this is one. I'm just gonna put a little circle. and put it on a quick preheat. Preheat at 350, I mean, this doesn't necessarily need a preheat, but I find that it's less stressful on the board, especially this is a, a compact flash, so the board is a little bigger, and we're gonna ha have to heat it up in four different areas, so uh, I much prefer to have the uh, something underneath heating up the device, that way uh, there is less chances of warping the board.
So this is what the final product uh, ends up looking like. So the thing we want to inspect is that there are no visible shorts on this card. And uh, so far, so good. Like it, it really looks like the bowls had seated really nicely. You what? You definitely don't want the uh, chip to be too close to the board because then the spheres get compressed. Solder bowls get compressed and they obviously expand in the uh, area that they're taking up. And the closer the chip gets brought into the to the board surface, the bigger those uh, solder bowls will expand to, and that may create a short. This is our repaired card. This is the reader. I'll plug it into the reader like this. The reader goes into a USB 3 port like this. You see it flash, great. What do we have here? This is the uh, partition, and there are the images. This is the most effective way to get data off of a failed unit, but it does require you having that identical donor. So if you're in uh, digital photography, videography, if you're using flash drives, memory cards, anything that has uh, flash memory chips, on it, you should definitely go for two units that are identical to each other. It will save you from a lot of headache. I mean, this case could have been solved as a chip off recovery by taking out the memory components and working it with our tools. But as you could see, this is much easier. This took about maybe 45 minutes to an hour. But having this recovery uh, done as a virtual controller might have not brought as good of results as it does with hardware controller working. So uh, if you guys like this video, hit thumbs up. Uh, subscribe to this channel if you have not said, signed up already. Uh, and I'll see you in the next episode. Thank you for watching.